Today it's raining. <laughs> or it has been almost nonstop for, oh, I don't know, two or three days. And we need the rain. You know, some people, they take a look at their life and they think, Oh, if only everything was smooth sailing. You know, being out there on the lake, you know, and taking your time and enjoying just the nice summer breeze and kind of sunshine on your shoulders and the boat just skipping over the waves, you know, or the calm and the wind just slightly enough to take it over the waters so that you could just cut through it like a knife through butter. For some people, I guess that is what life is all about. Finding those quiet, peaceful times. My life really has always been kind of in turmoil. You see, I've always been around catastrophic events. When I was younger, I remember being put into a rowboat, you know, one of those little little rowboat, you know what a rowboat is, and I think I was maybe eight or, I was really young anyways, and I guess the water, the rain had flooded Santa Ana, California of all places, and uh, so they put me in it, you know, and then they had it tied to a rope and they let me drift out, and then they took a picture of me and put me on the front page of the Orange County Register. Ooh. <laughs> I don't know if I was on the front page, but that's the way the story was told to me. I don't think I've ever seen the picture, but it's probably in an archive somewhere. But they set up the shot in order to demonstrate how bad the rain had been and how much it had flooded. You know, I remember lots of things being reported in the news as being catastrophic and terrible and horrible. But you know, when I had my dogs, my golden, well, actually, Chow Samoyan Husky, but she looked like a golden retriever. Her name was Hosanna. And she got to me, you know, she was, I was attached to her. And then I had Red, who was a Chesapeake Bay retriever. And they were Alaskan dogs, you know, they'd grown up in Alaska, raised in Alaska, spent most of their time in Alaska. But whatever city I went into, I used to throw frisbees for them. And they would run, chase, you know, each other to chase the frisbee and leap in the air and catch it. Well, the more that I did that at different parks, people started catching shots of it. And it was funny because after a while, the news reporters seemed to catch a picture of my dogs leaping in the air and catching a frisbee. And it would make it into some slow news day and make it on the front page of the newspaper. Funny how that was, you know. People wanted to, on a slow news day, hear about the, or read about the dog that leapt in the air, you know, to catch the frisbee. The joy, the good news, instead of the bad news. You know, in your life, sometimes, maybe you get too much bad news. Maybe you need to think about, in the midst of a storm, when it's raining, some of the good news about what God has done for you. You see, there was a old psalm that said that the old timers wept when they remembered Jerusalem for they had seen the previous temple built and they remembered the glory of the first one and the second wasn't quite the same. But then they recounted the stories to the young people and they were inspired with hope. They were given an excitement, a joy and maybe that's what if you're older, you need to do with your children. You need to give them songs of deliverance. You need to tell them the stories of your experiences as you've gone through life, as you've weathered the storms, as you've gotten the crow's feet and the wrinkles and the scars that are maybe on your body someplace. Mine kind of go up my belly and I've been cut here and there. And Shoot, they've done all kinds of surgeries on me. But if you have scars, and you're able to talk about them, if you have gone through things with God and you're able to share it, that's what God wanted you to do from the very beginning, to weather the storms, to go through these times of life so that you would be able to share to the next generation those things that you accomplished 
and that God brought you through. The reason why is because when you tell those stories of faith, people can see it in your eyes. They, they can feel it in your voice. They can tell by the joy on your face how God delivered you from whatever circumstances there were. And they know that what you're telling them is true because it's your testimony. It's your word. It's your life experiences that you're sharing with them. And that's what God always intended you to do, to share your life experiences, not to go get a theological degree and talk about things that are all intellectual and up here in your brain, but what's in here in your heart. God wants you to share what you've been through, not what you haven't done and what you haven't experienced. He wants you to give someone else hope for the reason that lies within you, the calling that God has given you. Hope maketh not ashamed. I am the Lord. They shall not be ashamed that wait for me. Blessed is the man that trusts in the Lord, and whose hope the Lord is. Thou wilt keep him in perfect peace, whose mind is stayed on thee, because he trusts in thee. Trust you in the Lord forever, for in the Lord Jehovah is everlasting strength. My soul, wait thou only upon God, for my expectation is from him. He only is my rock and my salvation. He is my defense. I shall not be moved. I am not ashamed, for I know whom I have believed. God willing more abundantly to show unto the heirs of promise the immutability of his counsel, confirmed it by an oath that by two immutable things in which it was impossible for God to lie, we might have a strong consolation, who have fled for refuge to lay hold upon the hope set before us which hope we have as an anchor of the soul, both sure and steadfast, and which entereth into the, within the veil, whether the forerunner is for us, enter in, even Jesus. In essence, we have a confidence, we have a reassurance because of what Jesus has done, that we don't just have a hope in salvation, we have a confidence, we have an expectation we have a realization, as it were, that God will do what he's promised to do for one reason. We've already seen it in our lives. You see, you may not have faced death yet. Some of us have. You may not have been restored from falling down seven times, but some of us have. You may not completely understand all the oracles of faith or all the theological questions there are out there. And most of us don't, really. We make up answers for them according to the wisdom we've been given and the knowledge. But when it gets down to the, the real grunt of the matter, you can tell someone about rain, but unless they stood in the rain and got wet, they really don't know what rain is. You can tell someone about sunshine, but unless they stood in the sunshine and watched the sunrise, they really don't know what they're talking about. The common things we take for granted sometimes are the most indefinite and most unreliable of things unless you've experienced them. And then you go, oh yeah, I know what a sunrise is. Oh yeah, I know what sunshine is. Oh yeah, I know what rain is. Oh yeah, I know what a fire is because I stuck my finger in it and got burned. So you see, it's one thing to talk about faith. It's great assurance to talk about hope. It's a great religious idea to preach. But the only way you really reach someone is when you share the common experiences that you both have had in faith. Because unless God took you through it, you really don't have much to talk about, do you? It's just a theological idea and a nice story that put out there. But unless you've been there, most people don't want to hear what you have to say. But once you've been there, <laughs> then you know what the facts are. You know how real God is.